How is everybody on this fine Monday morning? Oh, wish I could be saying I was doing better. I was had this conversation and it got personal. I didn't go personal, but some other people did. They were saying it all started with a new live action Black Ariel. Because of course, you gotta do every redo every white character as a black person. And I just said, uh, you know, and the comments were going the way you would predict. There was a lot of people who are under the impression said, if you don't like this, then you're a racist, you're a racist. And of course the usual um, counter argues they can't really talk about. You say, what would happen if they made white blade or white black panther? And of course the usual, they would just say, oh, well that's different. And that's all they can say, it's, why? Why is that different? They're all fictional characters. Hell, we even cast black actresses to play real white British queens and black actresses to play real life Viking kings today. So those are real people. They do matter. And, and, and it does matter what country they were from. So anyway, uh, and I was just pointing out, you don't really care about Ariel. You're just here to celebrate. Take that whitey, another one. In fact, this lady got into my DMs, ooh, sliding right in. Patricia Maria said, quote, a fish versus, in, in response to my Black Panther analogy, a fish versus a person from a land inspired by African cultures, crying, laughing face, crying, laughing face, regular crying face, ah, oh, three W's, sweet face, crying face again, emoji again, you're big mad, but go off, sis. But go, the words off, okay, I, I don't know if that's, if she meant to tell me to F off or what that is. I don't know, I had a stroke reading it. Anyway, uh, well, actually, sweetheart, Wakanda is a fictional place. Allow me to mansplain and white splain, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get myself in trouble there. Just kidding, all right? Uh, Denmark is not. Wakanda is a fictional, Wakanda, excuse me, not Wakanda. Wakanda forever is a fictional place. Denmark is not, and that is where the writer, uh, who created Ariel is from. That's where the original story took place. So, no, I'm not mad. It's, I'm not mad. I'm just pointing out that you don't care. You said it right there in your first word, a fish. You referred to the character Ariel, the Little Mermaid, as, quote, a fish. So you don't care either. The box office reflects that, okay? If, like, 1 in 15 or 1 in 20 women would go watch Ghostbusters 2016 or, or Birds of Prey, it would have made a billion dollars instead of a B, with a B, but instead it made eight million with an M. And it's still mostly dudes that watched it. You know, uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna watch live adaptation anything, okay? The only talking lions I wanna see better be animated. I don't wanna see computer generated mouths on a freaking lion like uh, a lion version of uh, Marmaduke. No thanks, no thank you. Um, I'm a grown man and I don't have kids, so I don't watch a lot of that shit, but I said it before and I'll say it again, this pretend, uh, to pretend that this is about, you just want equality. Uh, you have to pick and choose from history. Okay. Sure. Hollywood has in the past cast white actors with black face. They did John Wayne as Genghis Khan, but I assure you, I didn't cast those movies, okay? In fact, I just turned 37 on Friday, and I was born years and years after John Wayne and everybody involved in that movie had kicked the bucket. I was born even decades early. All those people uh, who hired the whiteface actors and all the, or excuse me, blackface, the white actors in blackface, those actors and the people who cast them, they've been dead a long time. They are... They, they, they probably died 20, 30 years before I was even born. So, and yeah, I don't think that it's fair. Um, maybe I'm wrong, right? So sins of the father, I guess, sins of the great, great, great grandfather. But again, my father and my grandfather didn't cast those movies either. So the left has this idea that the best way to combat racism is to tell you, you and your white skin are no good and you're evil and they get to be, treat you like shit and be absolute dickwads to you and take every, any character that has your skin tone away from you and that you might like or your kids might like, whatever. And I disagree with that. Um, you know, 
I had this conversation with a friend who happens to be from, I don't want to, I shouldn't say that. I don't want to be like that guy. Oh, listen to my black friend, you know, tell him black friend. I don't want to do that. But you know, he just said, um, you might not turn up someone racist overnight, but if you keep sticking a finger in someone's face, telling them, you know, you're a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. No, I get to treat you like, even though you didn't do anything to me, people of your skin color have done to things to people of my skin color in the past. So you're a piece of shit and I'm going to keep being a piece of shit. Uh, they might not still be racist, but that person will be closer to the clan than they were yesterday. I don't propose that. I, I, I think these people are doing a very good job because they're being told every day they're a piece of shit and they're not sinking to that level that, I don't know, but it seems like that's where they're trying to push you to go, okay? The using the sins of people in the years past. Well, people of your skin color 100 years ago did some, some bad race casting. So now I just found that out. Oh, and I'm, so I'm going to use that to be a complete cunt to you for no fucking reason. Okay. But let's see, to, to keep up the charade that it's about equality though, again, you have to pick and choose your history. Like it's a buffet. Oh, okay. Oh, I like, oh, I'm going to use this part where people of his skin color were mean to people of my skin color, uh, to be a dick. Oh, all this other shit that's happened in the last 50, 60, 70 years. I'm going to ignore that because to pretend that, because to acknowledge that equality has been come a long way, uh, doesn't give me the right to be a complete cunt today. So now I look this up. The black population in America has remained unchanged for most of the last 50 years. It's gone down a little bit just because other people of different nationalities are moving in, but it's roughly remained about 12%. In the 1970s, there were 193 shows on television. 14 of them had all black cast. An unfair 7.5% of shows. That doesn't mean the others didn't have black people at all. They were mixed. These were just purely black cast. In the 1980s, there were 243 television shows, and 25 had all black cast, or 10%. In the 1990s, there were 375 television shows, and 64 of them had all black cast, 17%, a 150% representation of the populace. In the 2000s, it dropped from 375 to 221, but that's just because streaming services, those numbers I couldn't find, but TV, there's less shows on TV because they're all going to streaming services now. So in the 2000s, there were 221 television shows with 52 all black cast television shows or 24%. And that's numbers remained uh, just gone up slightly in the 2010s. Again, it would drop to 173 television shows with 45 of those being all black cast or 26%. So one out of four, a population that's barely over 10% of the country still has one out of four television shows of people just cast. They're still in the other three out of four, but those but one out of four are des are designated exclusively just for them. Now, I watched a lot of show these shows myself, and there's a lot of good ones, okay? Uh, for my brother, he was he's a little older than me. He was uh, a team. He just want he he was like three, four. He could barely understand, but he wanted to watch Mr. T kick the shit out of people. Who doesn't? Gotta love Mr. T. And you know, we watched uh, my dad, who's a right wing Reagan Bush Jr. Fucking eh. Uh, Obama hating fucking God. Oh, he hated Obama? Well, he must be racist. Well, let's dissect this a little bit. He he watched the 18 with my brother. He he watched MC Hammer and Criss Cross. Remember that, Rocky? If you're watching this. We used to have all that shit. The parachute pants and wear our shit backwards. I mean, we were like seven. My dad watched that with us and he laughed that we liked it. He didn't care. He watched those music videos with us on MTV. He's a country guy, country music guy, and he watched MTV with us just because his kids liked MC Hammer and Criss Cross. We watched Fresh Prince, Family Matters. My dad thought Urkel was hilarious. Uh, that awful one, Eddie Murphy, no, the PJs, it, it had its moments. Bernie Mac, okay, Major Pain, one of my dad's favorite movies. The, one of mine too. And, you know, the my dad's favorite athlete, human being that ever existed was Bo Jackson. My dad would just watch replays of Bo Jackson play. He was so just mesmerized by the guy's athleticism. Every card that ever came into print 
of Bo Jackson, all those Bonos, Bonos hockey, Bonos baseball, Bonos karate, Bonos yoga, Bonos tennis, Bonos, you know, the idea is just the greatest athlete. My dad would agree. My dad has every one of them, okay? He would go into the comic book shops just because that was the only place that had the cards, and he would get, you got one of Bo Jackson? Okay, well, I'll take 10, and get on the off chance, one of them has Bo Jackson. Okay, if you ask me, his second favorite athlete, he'll tell you Jim Thorpe, the Native American who won all the gold medals, gold, silver, like he did, he did like four events and won Olympics. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to argue that guy's not a great athlete. So, that was it. And he supported us. And he watched Blade. That's probably the only superhero movie my dad will ever watch. He likes Blade. He's a big Wesley Snipes fan. Uh, and, you know, had... Had me or my brother ever said some shit like this Miss Patricia Maria, we said, Dad, how can you like Bo Jackson? He's black. He's not one of us. He's one of them. Oh, you know, hey, kids, how come you're not wearing, you guys want to watch the Criss Cross uh, MC Hammer music videos? No, Dad, we don't like them. They're the other race. They're not white like us. Yeah, you, you know, this Barney Mac show would be great if they would have just hired white people instead of these black people. Fresh Prince. Now, I can't watch that crap. Those people don't have my skin palette, Dad. They're the other color. My dad would have washed our mouths out with soap, spanked our asses with a belt, forbid us from hanging out with whatever friend he suspected of putting that shit, that kind of vitriol, in our heads, and sent us off to bed without dinner, and fucking glared at us silently for the next two weeks, making us scared as shit, wondering, what the hell, what, where did I go wrong with you boys? How could you think like that? But... Right? But that's because my dad is a racist. I'm a racist. And he obviously raised me to be racist, not fair and accepting like Miss Patricia and all these other people who just can't get behind a character unless it has, or a celebrity, unless they share the same skin palette and actually has animosity towards athletes and entertainers and characters who don't have their skin palette and demand that any one of the wrong skin color, this skin color, must be changed to their skin color, the right one, because they're accepting and fair, not racist like me. Anyway, that's all I've got. See ya.